And we're here with our petrified wood. It has been running in 4670 heavy silicone carbide grit uh, for one week. And we did run a little bit of ceramics with it uh, to fill the barrel because we didn't have quite enough petrified wood to fill our six pound barrel. But after one week, you can see it still has a lot of shaping to go. But boy, the colors are really popping now. There's a lot of, of these edges I'd like rounded more. There's some valleys and whatnot. Now we did run this with a little bit of ceramic media, which I normally don't do in the first week, uh, first couple of weeks, because uh, we want more shaping to happen. But I needed the space in the barrel filled so that we'd be running an efficient barrel at two thirds. But there was a lot of chipping happening. Um, these are just like a couple. But we had a whole lot, which is expected the first week or two. Um, there's a lot left still in the barrel I need to clean out. But it's really, I mean, this is all wet because we just rinsed out the barrel. We ran this six pound barrel with six tablespoons of the 4670 silicone carbide. Uh, and one tablespoon of baking soda to help with the organic matter that was on the rough so that we wouldn't have to burp the barrels. And uh, none of the barrels needed burping this week, so yay, it worked. Yeah, see there's a lot. A lot of valleys. Some pits. A lot needs to be done. See all these lines in here and all that sparkle? That's grit trapped in there. And if we were going uh, to a different stage, grit would get in there with a toothbrush and clean them all out, or a fingernail brush or whatever you have handy. But because it's going back into 4670, I don't really have to be all that particular with it. Yeah. Pretty, pretty happy so far. Probably have to add a little bit more ceramic media um, just because we had some volume loss. pretty a lot of variety in this petrified wood here lots of different colors I'm not gonna go through this whole barrel on camera but what I'm looking for at this stage, after the first week of, of running rough, um, is I'm looking for stones that are just never going to uh, tumble out. You know, things that are just really super pitted, super deep holes, um, stones that need to be cracked in half, you know, because they're too big or... Like, see, this has got a lot, a lot going on. Where you can see, that would be an awful lot that would have to be ground off in order to be smooth. So this could be a potential problem child stone, meaning it's never gonna do what we want. I am going to leave it in the barrel in this 4670 super hard or super coarse grit uh, to help with volume. But this is not ever, it, even though the colors are gorgeous and I really, really love it, it's never going to tumble out to be the way that we want it. 
you know, nice and smooth, like say this one will turn out to be nice and smooth. It's practically there now. Yeah, so we have some little tiny pieces break off. But it's a pebble size. But we'll leave it in there to help with the grind. Oh, I'm excited to run petrified wood. See, that's a potential issue, but we'll see. See a little chippage right there. I have a project that I'm using these little chips for, making little gem bottles. So I do take them out, there's media, um, and, and set them aside. I don't let them grind in the barrel uh, because I'm using them for another project. Otherwise, they're just going to eventually grind down the dust. Some will say it helps make a thicker slurry. I'm sure it does, but I have a purpose for them. All right, I'm going to go through the rest of this off camera, make sure I get all the chips out of the barrel. I'm going to recharge it with this barrel with 4670, six tablespoons of it. I will not put baking soda in the mix this time because the organic material has been ground off and I really doubt I'm going to have to burp a barrel at this stage. Um, and I am going to add a, like three tablespoons of borax as an experiment to see if that thickens the slurry. And uh, we'll find out next week if, uh, if it helps. I ran an experiment with the borax on the three pound barrels and I saw zero help um, with thickening but the barrels were super easy to clean after that so that in itself is a good reason to add it but we wanted an experiment to see what helps thicken the slurry so I am going to add less water to this grind than I normally do and I'll see if that and the, and the borax help. Yeah, let's see, I'm getting little, little chips. All right, I'm gonna finish this off camera. Um, sweet, and we'll be on to our next barrel. And we're back with our lime green quartz. It has been running one week in 6090 silicone carbide grit, or stage one. No ceramic medias were added to it. No baking soda because the rough was really, really nice and I wasn't anticipating any gas issues from organic materials. Um, and I have a couple of pieces of it in the rough that I didn't break down to put in the barrel because they were really large. And as you can see, there's a little bit of translucency even coming from the light above. Let's see if I can get that in here. Nope, there's no, no way to do that. But you can see there's some translucency right in here. So it's not opaque, which means it's not that green apple opal. However, the um, I did a most hardness test and it came out to like between a six and a six and a half. And that's a little bit softer than most quartz, which runs at a seven. So it leads, uh, some people to believe that it might be prenite, but it's not clear enough to be prenite. I don't know. We'll see. I'm sticking with quartz. That's what the vendor said it was, or a uh, lime green quartz, and I'm just going to stick with that. But I'm interested if, to hear in the comments what you guys think it is. So we started this last week. I'm really super happy with it. There's one or two pieces that I'm not happy with that I'd like to run one more week or a few more days in 6090. Just not happy with some of these little things. Uh, most of them are going forward to medium. 
It does have a little bit of a grainy texture to it, which is to be expected. And uh, let me get my water. Let's see if we can see that. There, you can see that grain, that granular texture. Medium should remove most of that. And then once it gets to the pre-polishes of 500 and 1000, it'll be gone. It'll be nice and smooth by the time it gets to polish. Yeah, pretty cool. I'm really happy with the way this is turning out and it's, it's you know, working up so fast. But um, even though it's a, you know, not a seven on the most scale, I'm still gonna run them in seven day cycles. Still hard enough to deal with it. There's a little grit in there I'm gonna have to go wash out. I'm a little concerned this whole tip. You see that fracture line going all the way around it? I'm a little concerned that might get knocked off at some point. So do I go and chisel it off now? I don't know, I'm gonna leave it. All right, these are gonna get a good scrub to make sure there's no uh, grit left over uh, in any little tiny holes so that uh, we have no grit contamination when it moves forward to medium. Just really lovely. I wish every stone we ran would, would uh, work up like this. It almost feels like a calcite. But you can never really tell at just one week. This is the potential for spalling, which is already happening. But that could have just been fractures from the rough and it might work its way out. Really pretty. Pretty happy with it. It is drying. I'm trying to keep them damp, I'm trying to keep them wet. We've got their barrel here that still has water in it. Just plain tap water until I can get the barrel charged. These two I'm gonna hold back. Um, they need more work. So what are we gonna do? I'm gonna hand wash those stones. I'm going to put them through two or three, maybe probably four wash cycles. And then I'm going to charge that barrel with medium. Um, and that's what we're gonna do. I'm kind of rambling today. So our lime green quartz is going to go to 120, 220, three tablespoons, maybe two and a half tablespoons in here. We're going to add ceramics so that we can cushion it. Um, really, there's not enough to run in this three pound barrel. So I'm probably going to move it down to a one and a half pound barrel, which means the grit will go down to one and a half tablespoons of the 120, 220. But we're going to wash them in this. All righty, be right back. And we're back with our 6090 silicone carbide grit three pound barrel of prairie agate. It's been running, I don't know, how long has it been running? Two weeks in the 6090 and then two weeks in the 4670 before that. So it's been a month and uh, let's, let's see if we're ready to move forward to medium yet. I'm gonna say no. Agates take a long time. It's not unusual for it to be two months or longer in 6090, depending on your level of perfectionism. And uh, can't get a good. All the stones behind it is trying to focus on. It's getting closer, but there's still some parts that need a little more work mainly this whole seam here i 
I think this one's my favorite. Kind of looks like bacon. Yeah, see that spot right here. Want that to work out a little bit more. There's just a little bits here and there. I just don't think it's ready yet. This one's feeling pretty good. It's just this area right here on the end. I would like to work on that just a little bit more. I like that piece. There is just a little bit of pitting right in here. That has a lot of work. Lots of variety in this crushed prairie agate. I like the pattern on this one. It's getting smaller. This one that we were watching, thinking that this was going to break off, still holding strong. Yeah, I think this is all going to need another week. There's, um, it's just not ready yet. So we're going to put this back in. to look at. Lots of different patterns. Hmm. Okay. We did get a chip this week. We have that to our chip project. kind of cool but you can just feel there's little tiny bits that I'm being anal retentive over that I want to work out more so we're gonna recharge that barrel uh, now we were doing an experiment uh, two experiments um, with this prairie agate in the three pound barrel for a seven day cycle we wanted to, uh, we had been noticing a lot of grit not being uh, used up. So, and we were using three tablespoons of silicone carbide. Now we're going to, do, we took it down last week to two tablespoons. And it seems like that's the, the right amount because there was still just the teeniest bit of grit left over. Um, so that told me that that in, in a seven day cycle in a three pound barrel that um, the, I guess the rotations on the barrel or whatever, it was enough to chew up two tablespoons of grit, but three, it was not long enough. So we are going uh, to continue recharging it with the two, um, two tablespoons. Yeah. And then the second one was we did just a little bit less water, thinking it would um, uh, thicken the slurry. And it, it wasn't really enough to... I, I still think we could use maybe a little bit less water, because the slurry was still pretty thin. Okay, we're going to go recharge this. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back with our snake skin Jasper. It has been running in 6090 coarse silicone carbide grit for four weeks. And uh, it's time to take a look at it and see uh, if any of this is ready to move forward to 120. So it still appears to be sharp edges, but they're, they're rounded, if that makes any sense. This piece feels really good. There's no... problems with that. 
really. I think it's ready to go to 120. This is not, there's, it's been so, a lot of shrinkage this week in this barrel. Um, however, I mean, the slurry was super red still, a uh, little foamy, a little thick, um, which was nice. We wanted to see it thicker, but I'm not really seeing the progress I want to see, but these are like getting really super thin. I don't know. I'm just not, I mean, there's, it's going to be nothing but chips by the time we're done with it. It just doesn't seem to be progressing even after a month. There's still a lot of pits and valleys. Um, no chippage, no breakage in the barrel. But there's still, you know, things like this on it that are just not working their way out. This has a lot of damage. Well, it's not damage. It's just there's a lot of little lines on there that I don't like. They're kind of like pitted lines. Goes all the way around the stone. And it just, I don't think it's going to take a polish well. This may end up being a really pretty garden stone. It feels really good. This may just have to stay another week in 6090. There was a lot of ceramic media in the barrel, which kind of impedes grinding, but we needed it to fill. But I think I'll be able to just move this to a smaller barrel, remove some of the ceramic media, and recharge it with a 6090 grit. Yeah, I think that's going to be the choice. Our quartz uh, seam that's on here is grinding away. Still holding its shape on that side. That's veining. I like that to work its way out. Yeah, I mean, pieces like this, it's just going to be really hard. <sighs> I would be better off cracking this section off. Taking all of this off. It's going back in for another week. There might be one or two pieces that I can pull out, but... I don't think I'm going to start splitting it just yet. It's just going in for another week. Yeah, and some of these are getting really, really small. But they still have issues. <sighs> I mean, you know, pebbles. I think I'm going to move this down to a smaller barrel and get rid of some of the ceramic media and recharge it for 6090. Okay, we'll see you this next week. And we're back with our Picasso Jasper that has spent one week in medium 120 220 silicone carbide grit and it's looking wonderful. starting the surface is starting to feel much smoother
pretty darn happy with it so far. Pretty amazing patterns in this. Really, really loving it. Now, last week, uh, we were able to take the remaining uh, stone from the 6090 and combine it with the stuff we had pulled out for the 120 and combine that barrel. We went back up to a uh, three pound barrel and uh, we were able to run it all together and it's just looking lovely. Oh, well, there goes that one. Oh, that's optical. There's nothing there. Whew. That does have a divot. See that? But it's not catching any grit. Wow. There are some really small ones, but a few stayed nice, larger size. This is looking really, really good. It's drying really fast. But it's looking really good. I think this is going to be able to run or move forward to medium. So we'll have two barrels going to medium this week. Wow. Just really, really cool. I really like this. Now you can still see there's a little tiny bit of a grainy texture to it, but as it progresses through the pre-polished stages, um, then it'll just get smoother and smoother and smoother. Oh, I'm so happy with this. It's so pretty. It's Picasso Jasper. Oh, I think this whole barrel can move forward. Let me say that and then there's that little chip. It hasn't smoothed out yet. It's more like, it's not really a chip. It's more like a quartz seam opening up. Hold that aside. I'm going to finish inspecting these off camera and uh, pieces that have some possible issues I'm going to pull out. Everything else I'm going to run in wash cycles and then put into aluminum oxide 500 pre-polish. And then I'll hold these couple of pieces uh, back to uh, run with another barrel needs just a little bit more time. Okay, yay, moving forward. Okay, we'll move on to, um, th that's our only barrel we had in 120 this week, so we're gonna move on to our barrels in 500. We'll be right back. And we're back with our repair barrel of Mixed Mo's Seven Stones. It's been in 500 pre-polished aluminum oxide for one week. So we're going to take these out and uh, see what condition they're in. All right, we'll be right back once we separate them. And we're back. Uh, we've gone through all these ceramic media. There's been no chippage in the barrel, so we're very, very happy about that. We're going to start with our blue adventurine that just feels wonderful, blemish free, can't feel a thing. 
And I think it's ready to move on to 1000 pre-polish. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Ooh, there's a little rough spot there. I do not want to move that rough spot onto 1000, so we'll set it aside. Okay, so that's it for the blue adventuring in this barrel. Uh, this piece that we're going to set aside, we're going to send it back to 120. Because that little piece, this corner, has some spalling on it. Uh, and some uh, just some roughness still right there. So I want that worked out because, I mean, the rest of the stones are just so gorgeous. We're gonna bust this back to the 12220. Um, we'll put it in a barrel of repairs for that. And then it'll move through the stages again. Okay, so that's it for the blue adventurine. Now let's take these three pieces of green. It doesn't look like it has any spalding on it. And these are still wet. Doesn't look like there's any bruising. There's no pits or fractures. It can move on to 1000. So that's it for the green that was in here. We got a couple pieces of purple. That's feeling better, but just not 100%. Seems to be some really fine pitting and cracks in here. I think this is just going to go to the Zen Garden at this juncture. I mean, it's a pretty... I mean, it's small, but not like pebble small, but... With the amount of pitting and fracturing on this particular stone, I don't think it's really going to take a good polish. So I'm just going to put it in the Zen Garden. Okay, this one ha still has spalling on it. That little fracture line is eroding and opening up. And there's more over here as well. Now this is a bigger size piece. I'd really like to take a Dremel tool to that and repair it. And then move it forward. If I put this back in like 120, it'll just get beat up more. So I think just a little touches either with a flat lap when I get that back from repairs, because uh, that machine's currently broken, needs a new motor. Um, or I could not wait and use the Dremel tool. I don't know, we're gonna set it aside for repairs. Okay, we have some red adventuring that's doing a catch up. That feels good. A little bit of bruising. You can actually feel that. Oh, you can feel that right there. I want to take that back. That's a big enough piece. It can go back. I really, you know, would like close to perfect stones here. fingernail catches right there. Again, this is a pebble. That'll go to the Zen Garden. This still has micro pitting. But the rest of the stone is gorgeous. I'm going to put that back to 120 again. I think sometimes I just get in a rush or I get tired of it and I just want to move it forward. But since we have stuff going back, 
We might as well get it as close to perfect as possible. Oh, that's breaking off. Yeah, I'm gonna hold that back too. We had one piece of zebra that had pitting uh, fracture lines that are eroding there. that has just eroded to the point that it's no longer catching grit, but it's not going to be super shiny. The rest of the stone looks like it will take well. But since I have other things going back for 120 repairs, I'm going to just practice with this one and we'll just see how, how much <laughs> abuse this poor little stone can take. I have a couple pieces of dragons no excuse me of uh, african bloodstone that we had put back it is now feeling delightful and it is ready to move forward to 1000 all right we have a couple pieces of tiger's eye that's doing a catch-up look at how interesting that is and here's this whole pattern opening up because it had the top uh, host rock had been ground away so for so long it's you know that's some hematite and whatever else was in there I think that's gonna polish beautifully this whole stone is wonderful and can move forward to 1000 it's another piece of uh, tiger's eye it's feeling really super lovely that can move forward we had a piece of blue tiger's eye Ooh, we still have a little slurry on that. That happens sometimes. So now it's wet from our cloth. These little pits there are not grit catchers. So I'm just going to leave it. I think this is going to polish okay. There's some cracking in here. Then hopefully 1,000 will microplane down, 1,000 aluminum oxide. Okay, let's put that in the barrel as well. <sighs> we have some peach uh, adventurine that it, uh, was in this barrel. And let's see if it's going to need to go back. That is optical. Uh, you can't feel it. So that's going to move forward. Oh, yeah, that's going to go back to 120. That would be a real easy flat lap repair if my machine was up and running. But because it's not, we're going to stick it in 120. Wow, this one feels delightful. Yay! Oh, this has got a lot of bruising. You see all these white lines? That's all bruising. I'm very, very bummed about that. But if we take this back to 120, uh, it should just do a really fine. Now, this is beautiful patterning. This is part of that patterning, but part bruising as well. So if we take it back to 120, it is going to grind, hopefully, this layer down a little bit to where we get rid of that bruising. And then we can move it forward again. It's a bigger piece. It's doing a catch up and this tip is still needing a little work. So it was either damaged in this 500 barrel, which happens, or I moved it forward too soon, which could have happened. That's going back to 120. There's multiple things on this that can be worked on. Erosion is opening this up here. And the longer it's in, the more erosion we're going to get. But we might get really careful, or we might get really lucky. And it might open up just enough to where it won't be a grit catcher. So that's going back to 120. This one feels wonderful. Let's 
But there's a little... My finger catches on it. Yeah, we've got stuff going to 120. We'll stick that in there too. Then we have smoky quartz and clear quartz. A couple of pieces here. Um, and it's just wonderful. Uh, except for here. Feels so smooth. It's just this tip. And since I have things going back to 120 that are in the same Mohs hardness, we might as well put this in the barrel too. Now you see there's still, when this dries here, there's still, well, that's a wet one here. Let's dry. You see that it's like a little frosted, not, not quite as clear as it was when it was wet. When this goes through the 1,000 uh, aluminum oxide pre-polish, the second stage of pre-polish, it'll get even clearer so that when it goes to polish, it'll be a lovely clear stone. Now let's wet this. And you see how much clearer it is wet. That little piece there is dry in the middle here. So you can see the frosting difference between what it's going to look like when it's polished versus just the 500. So I'm going to get it all wet. It'll be lovely. That one's feeling perfect. A couple more pieces. That one's really good. Oh, okay. All of this can move forward to 1000 and we pretty much split the barrel and then we've got all this that we're going to hold back all that is going back to 120 for further repairs okay um we will be back with our next barrel okay we're back with our 500 aluminum oxide pre-polish of mixed adventurines now i know it looks like we just saw this um, in our previous segment, but that was a repair barrel that had all kinds of stuff in it. This was just straight up adventurines. Um, so we have seen the blue, yellow, and purple in their own videos uh, previously. And so we are going to concentrate on the green uh, for the, the green adventuring video. Now this is drying quickly. Um, it, it just came from the rinse and they're drying out already and we're looking for bruising and, and problems that should not move forward to medium. Excuse me, move forward to 1000 pre-polish, which is our second stage. This one's iffy. Might need a little bit more work. That is an optical illusion. Your my fingernail does not catch on that. They're feeling very smooth. I think these are gonna be ready to move to 1000. They typically only need one week and 500 unless there's damage. Like this one little tip looks bruised. And this might flake off if it gets hit right. Well, my fingernail's really not catching it. Feels really smooth. Fingernails not catching. I'm afraid that's going to continue to erode out and it might cause chipping and damage when it goes to 1000. We'll find out. Got 
gosh, that all looks damaged. That is damaged. I'm gonna pull these two out and set them aside. Oops. Concerned that it might be bruising. Well, when it runs through 1000, we'll know for sure. All right, well, most of the greens are going to go to a wash cycle and move forward to um, 1000 aluminum oxide, our second stage of pre polish. Uh, these two are going to be held back for repairs. I'll probably pop them in that barrel we just saw a moment ago. I'm going to do the rest of these off camera because the videos are already ridiculously long. And uh, we'll be back with our yellow adventurine that was in 1000 aluminum oxide pre-polish in just a minute. And we're back with our yellow adventurine. This is our bruising repair that we've been running and that we had to bust back all the way to 120 and move back and forth a couple of times before we're getting it to where we want it. Um, and this has been running for one week in 1000. And let's take a look and see if we have any bruising. I'm gonna take it out of here. I'm gonna inspect the ceramic media, make sure that there's no chipping or whatnot. And then we'll take a good look at the stones dry to see if there's bruising. We'll be right back. Okay, we went through the ceramic media and there was no bruise or no uh, chippage, so no, of the stone or the ceramic, so yay. You know, we're ahead of the game there. So we'll set all this stuff aside. Um, now, these are in the process of drying, so I'm just going to take a paper towel and dry the stone a little bit. And let's check these edges for bruising. Not seeing it on this stone. That's camera flash. This might be bruising right here. Some nice color. It's really deep. It's got a nice satin shine already, and that's from the aluminum oxide pre polish 1000. it. My nail doesn't catch on it, but it is definitely bruising. Okay to go to polish on most of these. But we are going to take a really good close look. It's just a couple of spots and you can't feel it. and everything look really good. 
Ooh, this one's pale. It's bruising right there. That's just fracturing. It's all under the surface. I think for the most part, this is ready to move on to polish. I think there are going to be a couple of little spots. Um, that we were unable to tumble out. Be a little bit, a couple little spots of bruising. For the most part, we got it out. But some of these, the bruising has gone under, under the layers. We would have to remove this entire tip here. All of that would have to be removed to get rid of that. So do you sacrifice the stone or you just live with it? If my flat lamp was back, I would just take, I would take it off. I am going to set aside when that comes back. don't I mean it, when I turn it I don't see it so I'm, I'm hoping it's just the flash or the uh, glare from the light might be bruising that tip is definitely bruised I've liked this piece all the way through. I like the shape of it and the little nose. And it seems like there's still a little bruising on that nose. Okay, we're gonna put it in some wash cycles, change out the ceramic media to polish media, and uh, run it for seven days in aluminum oxide polish and it's the 8,000 grit, um, or the 2 micron, because it gets it a really nice polish. Yeah, it's bruised. Aww. That whole tip is bruised. See how much of the stone we would have to lose, that whole corner. Okay, um, we took four pieces out that we're going to hold for the flat lap machine. The rest are going back in the barrel, wash cycles, well cushioned, by the way. We put a lot of ceramic media in there. Um, wash cycles and then we'll see it next week. Okay, we'll be right back with our barrels that are in polish. And we're back with our barrels and polish. This is our soda light, um, which has been running in aluminum oxide polish for one week. And we also added a, a tablespoon of borax to the polish this time uh, as an experiment. And it looks real bubbly. So that's kind of interesting. Pull our water aside here. Let's just take a piece out, give it a quick little rinse. Let's dry it off. We're going to need another dryer paper towel. <gasps> oh, look at that sparkle. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at the shine. Whew. Just perfect. I'm 
Nice shine. You know, adding the borax to this polish makes it a lot easier to inspect. Um, before they were so super heavy with polish that, you know, it was hard to rinse it off. This doesn't have as high a shine on it as I had expected, and the surface feels like there's been a lot of undercutting, and I'm terrified there's a broken stone in this barrel. This is going to have to go back. I'm not happy with that one. That was my favorite piece. Okay, let's just grab a few. I'm looking for some bigger pieces here. Oops. Okay. up. Oh, I don't like seeing that chipping. I'm concerned that there's been damage in the barrel. But again, these weren't perfect going in, remember, because this is a softer stone, we were concerned. So we kind of let some imperfections go. Nice shine. Now these are going to need a burnish cycle. They're still a little bit tiny sticky. We'll get all that polished residue off. Even adding the borax, the borax to it, it is um, still going to require a burnish cycle. Get all the polish out of all the tiny. Whoops, we lost our flash. Gotta get that polish out of all these tiny nooks and crannies. Beautiful shine though. Okay, I'm gonna plug my, my camera in here. It's losing power. I'll be right back. Okay, now well, we got the camera plugged in. Let's continue on. So this soda light has imperfections in it because it's a soft stone and we decided instead of running it in our rotary tumblers longer beating up the stone, uh, we would just let the imperfe imperfections come through. So what I'm concentrating here on is the shine, not these little imperfections that are driving me nuts. Uh, the shine's beautiful, so it's a success with the aluminum oxide. Um, I have no problem doing soda light in a wet polish, um, even though it's softer. But you see all these right here? These imperfections, these cracks and spalling and whatnot. When we get the vibratory tumbler, um, we're not going to let that pass. We're going to go back to our anal retentive, wanting it to be <laughs> perfect stones. Boy, these are some dark, dark blue. My paper towels are getting all soppy wet again. Really pretty shine. Not happy with the imperfections, but that's just me. I'm gonna run these in a burnish cycle, uh, probably for about 12 hours to a day. 
and um, to make sure that in any of these little cracks and crevices we get all the polish residue out. And then I'll get some photos of it and then um, when our vibe comes in I have more sodalite from this same batch and we will run an experiment doing coarse stage only in the rotary and then moving everything else to the vibratory tumbler and we'll see um, what the difference of you know in the process is what the difference in um, shine and um, we'll see if uh, if it's better for these softer stones oh, so delight it's so pretty all right we'll take a look at this again and you know what this means this means we've got like a barrel opening up so we'll start something new at the end of today's video all right we'll be right back Okay, we are back with our soda light after a quick rinse. Um, it has not gone into the burnish cycle yet, but I wanted to give you guys a better look at these pieces once they were rinsed off. They're still a tiny bit damp. But we've got some beautiful shine. There's this piece here that I've been watching all the way through. It has some sort of a dark metallic. There it is. There's some mineral in here. It's really cool. It's really dark, has a really neat flash to it. Kind of rainbowy. You only see it when you turn the stone, you know, a certain way. Now again, as we were talking, we let these stones go through without becoming perfect. Um, so we are, do have some spalling and we have some uh, fracture when the stone was cut up that we did not tumble all the way out. And there's that black, interesting mica something or other in it. I'm just saying, my guy could be completely wrong. But that's really cool. And then you've got stones like this that have a lot more of the white mineral in it. So it looks like there's three types of minerals in this sodalite. And there might be more. So there, it is prone to some undercutting. So you, we really should be shortening the uh, run cycles. I was not kind to this stone. Um, please don't bash me in the comments. <laughs> I just ran it through seven day cycles like I did everything else because I'm experimenting and I want to see what what is the best cycle for all of these. And these are completely dry now. Um, I'm finding that I'm going to want to try this in a vibratory tumbler so it reduces the amount of time that it spends um, getting beat up in the rotation. So these were done seven day cycles for every cycle, um, you know, stages one through five. We did two pre polishes. Uh, so we did a course 6090. We did probably for a couple of weeks. Oh, hang on, I can tell you for sure. Let me just pull my sheet out. We ran Soda Light for one, two, three, four, five weeks. We did five weeks in 6090, which was probably too long. However, there's still a lot of, maybe it wasn't too long. It was too long because it reduced the size, but uh, there's still, as you see, errors in these stones. Uh, blemishes, not errors. So maybe five weeks wasn't enough. Anyway, five weeks in stage one, one week in medium, one week in 500, one week in 1000, and one week in polish. All in the rotary. I did not want to keep these in 6090 because um, to get rid of all the blemishes because I was afraid we'd have no stone left. So I want to tweak some processes the next time I run it and I want to do it in a vibratory tumbler and see if that really helps or not. Um, 
And then I'll probably do a third batch of sodalite so that we, uh, you know, if I can get the results twice in a row that I want, then I'm, I'll say that that's a, a, a recipe I want to continue to use. So, I love these experiments. That's a gorgeous stone. And then you turn it over and you have that. That is so disheartening. <sighs> okay, I just wanted to come back and show you before it went into the burnish cycle. Alrighty, these are going to go get a really good, good wash cycle. And uh, then I can get photographs of them for the experiment. Okay, we'll be right back with our sea jasper. And we're back with our sea jasper. It has been running one week in our aluminum oxide polish. Oops, Let's adjust that camera angle. All right, you can still see a little bit from my fingers. That took a superior shine. That is a gorgeous shine. Now remember, this had a lot of pits in it. Uh, we weren't happy with this, the rough that came in from the vendor. We ran it anyway. But as you can see, oh, hang on. I'm just going to put that other paper towel aside because it's wet. Okay. You see the fracture lines and the pits and everything is so, so deep that we would have to grind away most of the stone in order to get rid of those imperfections. So I'm not happy with the condition of the stones, but the actual polishing process I'm okay with. I'm good with. And like I said, this took a fantastic shine. But it really emphasizes the defects, doesn't it? And this is why we spend so much time in course in stage one. Because we want to get these imperfections out so that when we finally get to this stage of polish, um, we will have a nice product for all the effort that was put into it and the time. Now, Sea Jasper is a trade name uh, for orbicular jasper. And this particular rough uh, was mined out of um, one of the mines in Madagascar, where this sea shelf is, you know, under the ocean is at. They have that claim. And I just don't think that this rough was, it, you know, it's not the vendor's fault, okay? It is not their vendor's fault. It is the mine. And it's really not their fault either. You know, you can only dig up what's actually there. I just was unfortunate enough to get a crappy badge. I will rerun um, Ocean Jasper, Orbicular Jasper, Sea Jasper, pick a vendor name. Um, in the future, if I can get a really nice batch of rough to start with. So this has what's called a bug. That's a V like Victor, U-G like go. And it has dark crystals in it. And you can, oh, and fuzz. I'm trying to get a good, a good show on the crystals in there. These are just a dark crystal. So that's kind of, that's not a defect, that's just a natural thing that happens with the stones. However, these pitting, these little pits are defects. Ah. 
Okay, dry off. Boy, polish really shows the defects. But that shine is amazing. So the process is correct. It's just your level of perfectionism. See how that just... Another bug there. I'm looking for that one. Ooh, this is pretty. I like the green and yellow on this. My fingers are still a little damp, sorry. See the those circles? Two little orbits. Where it gets that orbicular name. That is one of the better stones out of this batch, even though it's little. It's still one of the better stones. Oops. Okay, I there was one in here that I'm looking for. Here it is. This is my favorite out of this whole badge. And it retained a decent size, but it still has flaws. All right, one of these paper towels has got to be dry. There we go. <laughs> okay. I think this has just wonderful colors, interesting patterns. Unfortunately, it has this defect. Took a really nice shine, though. This one's still my favorite, defects or not. There's a rough spot there. <sighs> really pretty. I am going to uh, go off camera, get, you know, dig out the rest of these stones. Let's see if I can move the tripod here. dig out the rest of, of the stones that's in this polish. Uh, rinse them off, bring them back, we'll do a quick picture of all of them, and then they're going to go into a burnish cycle for a day, and then I can get final photos tomorrow. Okay, we uh, have one more barrel to get through that's in polish, and we'll be right back. Okay, here's a quick look at our Sea Jasper. Uh, it has just been rinsed off from the polish. It still has to go through a burnish cycle. But remember us looking at this one last week? Had that really interesting bug. There was white crystals inside of it. Beautiful shine. It's just a really deep pit.
Boy, the polish really shows up those those blemishes. Okay, we are going to put these on a burnish cycle and then we'll get final photos tomorrow. And uh, we've got one more barrel and we'll be right back. We're back with our last barrel that's in polish for this week. Uh, it's been running for one week in wet aluminum oxide polish. And let's take a look. There's a lot of different things in this barrel. Some uh, adventurines along with the red. Uh, the uh, It's been sitting a while. It's been sitting all day till we got to this barrel. And uh, so I'm going to pull out a lot of these adventurines. I'm going to put them in uh, a little bit of tap water so we can rinse it. And then we can take a good look at it. Um, all right, we'll be right back. Okay, we pulled a few out. We've got them in here. All right, this is a peach one. Wow, what a superior shine. Absolutely stunning. Yellow one over here. Again, perfect. Okay, here's a red one. Red ones are so much smaller. Looks like they were cut up on a tile saw. These are so many cubes. It is a lovely, lovely shine. I'm going to call our Red Adventurine a success. That's definitely the shine we want to see. Wow. This is amazing. Whew. So we're going to have three barrels that are in burnish today. Um, so tomorrow they'll be opening up and we can start new projects in those barrels. So that's always exciting. Whew, look at that. I would say uh, we've definitely got our recipe down for, re for adventuring. is just perfect. So remember a few minutes ago when we were looking at the sea green, no, the sea jasper and how pitted it was. And now look at the difference because we were really picky with this adventure, with this stone, making sure that we only sent to polish the really close to perfection stones we could get. And you see the difference in the polish. Mm, 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 mm. Gorgeous. Here's a purple one. It was ready to move forward to polish. And now it's got some mica. So that's the little sparkles that you're seeing. Giving that adventure essence. I know that's not the right word, but that's what I'm calling it. I think it's adolescence, but whatever. It's a great big piece of... Oh. 
pulling through the paper towel today. Wow, look at that shine. Ooh. Stunning. There's a piece of blue in here. Another piece of red adventure. watch it air dry here. Kind of chase it in the shine. Mm, 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 mm. Very happy. dropped it. Oh. They're very, very slick. Now these are going to go through a 24-hour burnish cycle to make sure we get all the polish out of any nook and cranny that might still be there. Wow. Oh, I just love these. It's still slipping out of my hand. There's a bunch more reds in here. Another piece of paper towel. Just a delightful shine. Woof. Can't wait to get these out of burnish tomorrow and uh, get the final photographs. Okay, I am going to uh, empty out the rest of that four and a half pound barrel or four pound barrel. Um, give them a quick rinse, light them up by color, take a quick picture or, or I'll come back and show you guys real quick. And then it's going into a burnish cycle for about 24 hours. And uh, after that, we'll start something new. Yay. All right, be right back. Okay, we're back uh, with our red adventurine after it's been rinsed. This is just everything that was in that four pound barrel. Got the reds and the peaches and the yellows, purples and some blues. All of these are ready for a burnish cycle. And uh, so happy with this barrel. It turned out so beautiful. All right, after the burnish cycle, we will get, um, oh, that's really purple, sparkly. Uh, we'll get individual photos after the burnish cycle. Wow, fantastic. The Adventurine is a success. we've got a three pound barrel open that we're going to start something new in and it's going to be zebra dorite which is a form of feldspar uh, this is it wet um, 
I have a couple still photos I can put in here that look dry. So we've got just short of two pounds of fell of this um, zebra dorite in here with two tablespoons of 6090 silicone carbide coarse grit in almost one tablespoon of baking soda to help with any organic material that might cause gas in the barrel. Um, again, three pound barrel, I'm gonna add some water, button it up, put it on the uh, um, tumbler <laughs> for seven days. All right, we started a new project, Zebra Dorite. Pretty cool, looking forward to this. Okay, we'll be right back with black onyx. Okay, so I'm going through my shelf, trying to find what to put in this four pound barrel. And uh, I found something called Pastel Jasper, and it's from the Fantasia mining site on eBay. And this looks suspiciously like the spiritite that mining dolls or digging dolls or whatever their name is sold me so i think it's the same thing with a different um, name vendor name so this stuff really is gorgeous not a lot of nice patterning to it and uh, i think we're going to run it and let's get it off our shelves and now we're gonna do some research and see what it act, what kind of Jasper it really is or how many trade names it goes by. <laughs> okay, we're gonna put 4690, or excuse me, 6090 silicone carbide grid in here, a little bit of baking soda, and we're gonna let it run for a week. Alrighty. All right, we are back with our last new barrel for this week. It is black onyx. We've got two pounds sitting here. It's a Mohs hardness of like six and a half to seven. Um, the left here is wet and the right side is dry and I'm going to see how much of this we can fit into our three pound barrel and uh, I'll be right back. And we're back with our black onyx, um, all but about five pieces fit in our three pound barrel. We have our two tablespoons of uh, 6090 silicone carbide in here with one tablespoon of baking soda. Now we're just going to add some water. Doo, 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 doo. Uh, just about there. We want just under the first layer of rock. Hopefully we'll get a nice thick slurry with this. Um, we're going to button it up and we will see it next week. Yay, another new project started. Okay, everybody have a great week.